Hello all, today I'm going to talk about how to set up TSA on HADR database. So TSA stands for Tivoli System Automation and why would you set up TSA on HADR which is already highly available database. HADR means highly available disaster recovery. So we have HADR database. Now the point is the HADR database although has got a primary and standby but in case if primary goes down there is no automated failover to standby which means DBA will need to log into standby database or standby server and issue the takeover or takeover by force till the time DBA logs in and issues the takeover the the database would no database would be primary which means we would have some kind of outage or some kind of business lost to avoid that situation we can implement the TSA situation solution so when you implement TSA on HADR database a database which is uh, primary and standby and when you implement TSA if for some reason the primary goes down or which means primary server goes down then the TSA is going to fail over and make standby primary this is done the standby is going to become primary without DBA intervention so my scenario is I got two nodes DB3 and DB4 so these are my two servers DB3 and DB4 I got I have installed DB2 on board DB3 and DB4 I have installed 10.5 FP5 I already installed I have installed TSA the HADR is active and th the database name is HADB so this is my scenario but currently there is no TSA present so only DB2 is installed the database is created the database is in HADR mode but this is normal HADR not the TSA the TSA is not present but the TSA software is installed what we are going to do is on the standby node we will run this DB2 high queue utility and I have set up this particular file which I will show you similarly on primary I will also run DB2 high queue uh, and I have set up this file. The only difference between this file in this file is the local host and remote host. Rest of the parameter, this file is pretty similar. So this particular file is pretty similar. Sometimes I have seen that this particular utility does not add the database. So you, you might have to add the database manually. So this is the simple solution to automate the TSA. So only three steps involved the db2 haiku on the standby db2 haiku on primary and optionally add the database if this command fails okay so this is this is when only we have seen that the hdr database has not added otherwise we don't need this particular command so what <coughs> what we are going to see in this particular scenario or the solution is this is the beauty if standby instance is killed if standby instance is down then automatically this instance will will be brought up by TSA and the database will be brought in HDR mode so you have an existing pair primary and standby and somebody kills the standby instance then TSA is going to bring the standby instance back into the uh, into uh, it's going to bring it up and it's going to activate the HDR similar to primary if primary goes down the TSA is going to bring it up and the database will be brought in HDR mode and now this is the most beautiful situation for some reason the server is crashed for some reason the power to primary server lost then standby takes the role of primary so this is the most important so for if like DBA you don't need the DBA to wake up, log in, go to standby and issue the uh, failover because the TSA is going to fail it over. So TSA is going to make the standby as primary. So we will see all of this scenario. But before that, we need to execute that. And before that, I need to show you this particular setup. So what I'll, I have done is I have already logged into my two hosts. The host is here is DB3 and here the host is DB4. These are the two hosts. So let me actually start the DB2 on both the instance. So what I'll do, okay, I think I lost my connection. Okay, while that is lost, let me do it here.
okay so no db2 is active so let me start the instance okay so now that i have started the instance the instance is up let me activate the database which will not get okay this is standby so this is in the standby mode so that this database will get activated okay let me log into three and what i'll do is i will now start db2 here as well and i will activate the database which is primary so when i activate this the standby and primary okay so now i wrote this small script which shows host name it says that this is primary peer st state is peer and connected which means all looks good so if i go to here and if i run the same script then you will see that this is standby so let me maximize this and you see host name db3 which is primary host name db4 which is standby so my hadr is up and running if i run tsamp command which is lsm then you will see no resource group defined which means all cluster is offline which means there is no dick that the cluster is not present as of now and i can show you the same on my db3 as well so if i go here and if i do if i do lsm you would see that there is no cluster at all so now okay so let's see okay this connection is gone so let me close this window and launch a duplicate session so i've got two sessions to same okay so now that that is done so now what i'll do is on this okay on this i will stay as a ssh and on this i'll stay as a db4 so now okay what i'll show you now is what software i have installed here so on db4 i got db2 10.5 fixed pack 5 and similarly on db3 as well i got the same software so 10.5 fixed pack 5 so that's what i have installed now what i'm going to do is you have seen that the cluster is not defined neither on db3 and db4 so to set up the cluster i have set up one file so let me show you that file this is the file and if you see in this particular file what i'm saying i'm going to create a domain called db2ha with the quorum which is network and the i am going to add the ip on db3 into private network and ip on db4 into private network and i am going to add these two nodes into my cluster and i am going to add the, the db partition num 0 this instance into my domain and finally i am going to add this particular database now here i am saying what is my local instance what is my remote instance what is my local host and what is my remote host this particular file is pretty similar to what is set up on my the other node except for the last part where the local host so everything else up to here remains same the file is exactly similar to what is there on db4 so we need this file on both we'll execute this on both the nodes but the point is here the remote is local host here is db3 and on this db4 local host is db4 so this particular only these two parameters are different in both the files apart from that this file is exactly same so this particular file from where you can find it out you can actually go to sql lib samples then ha then xml and then if i do ls minus l you will find this particular file so this is the copy of this file i'll repeat that so that particular file is present in sql lib samples ha xml and the file that i have taken to edit it is this particular file so this particular file has been used to come up with this particular file and if i had to go through this particular file again i'll show you what is that file is that file says 
I am going to create a TSA cluster with domain of db2ha network as my quorum. I'm going to add the at one IP as private network on db3 and at one on db4 as my private network. The two servers db3 and db4 will be my cluster nodes. I am adding this particular instance into my cluster and finally I'm trying to add this particular database. You have to do this on standby first. So remember that we have to do this on standby first. So before doing that, let's see what is our database status. Is this a standby? Okay, so this is a standby database as can be seen. We host name is db4 and the role is standby. So we have to initiate that particular command here. So let's do that. And the command is pretty simple db2 hicu specify the file and specify the file that we have set. So what is going to do is going to create a domain then it's going to set up the quorum then it's going to set up the private network on both the host then it's going to add the instance and finally it's going to add the database we have to do the exact same thing once it is done here we have to do this on the primary node and then once that is done we would find out that our cluster is set up so let's give it a minute so first domain and while it is doing that we can actually see the output of lsm because lsm will keep on increasing so okay so okay we should i should see it on okay yeah so this is the uh, domain okay i th think it added no this is okay so this is the private network then this is the resource group for the i believe instance yeah i believe this is for the instance this is the network okay so i guess let's see what it has done. okay so it has done this so let's review creates the domain okay so it has not been able to set up the quorum for some reason that's not good because Oh, I get that. So this is not the correct value for the quorum. That should have been 142.1. Okay, so it's not able to reach that either. Okay, so it's able to reach this value. Then cannot be reached re-enter a valid private IP. Oh, I'm not sure why it is not able to reach. Okay, so this is able to reach and okay so this one is not able to reach so this one has lost the connectivity okay it has come back and 101 okay 103 okay so let's try that once again so we'll run the same command again this time it will try to add the quorum only i tested that ip is reachable so let's see let's give it a try again this time is going to if it reaches that ip is going to just set up the quorum Again, I just executed the same command on standby for the quorum device. I wanted to add the quorum device. So yeah, see it did not create the domain this time because the domain is already there. So it's going to do that same thing. It tried to create the domain, but it found out the domain is already there. So now it's going to set up the quorum. First time in around, I think it was not able to reach for some reason. If it reaches the ip which is one the quorum ip then it will set up the quorum correctly let's give it a minute to see what the outcomes okay so the quorum was successful rest all everything we have already done so no worries so the output first was first it tried to create a domain then it tried to create a quorum but it was not able to reach this ip for some reason then it added the ips then it added the database partition and then finally it tried to add the database so this we have done on standby the first time around the quorum failed so i ran the same command again 
the, I ran the same command again and this time the quorum got created successfully. So now if I do lsm here you will see this is the output and what I'll do is I'll show you that this is my standby. So this is my standby database. We need to run the exact same command on primary. So I'll come to primary. So I'm coming to primary and here. So, so this is my primary peer connected. So exactly same command. I'm going to run again on primary as well. And this time everything is going to get successful except the network. So it will say the network is already added into the domain. So now as this has been done, if we keep on watching LSM output, it will have multiple entries. So right now it has got only entries related to DB4 or so if it does it, so it's first it's going to create the domain, then it's going to try to add the IPs which are already added, then it's going to add the instance, then it's going to add the database. That's what it is going to do. So give it a minute. So, okay, see it created a quorum. Then it's going to add the uh, network which already is added. Then it's going to add the instance and finally it is going to add the database. So now if I see the output of LSM, you see we have only this many resource groups but now we have more resource groups. This resource group first time around we had when we executed it on only on node uh, on the standby node we had only this much resource group. Now it has added more resource groups and we can find out that this many resource groups have come. Now if, if the, everything completes then we will have even more resource group because now the database is going to be part of our quorum device. Uh, sorry, uh, the resource group. So let's give it a minute. So it's adding the, finally it's adding the database. So let's give it a minute. Okay, so see it, it has added this particular database. So if we see the output of this, this is the network. These are the two peer nodes, DB3 and DB4. These are the cluster nodes. This is the, again, these are the two cluster nodes. Then here it actually adds the instance. So this is the instance. This is also another instance. So this is DB3 instance on DB3. This is instance on DB4. And this is the finally for the database. So database, these two are for the instance. These are for the nodes. Again, these are for the nodes and finally the private network. So the network, this is how the, so that is a resource group defined for network for the nodes, for the instance and for the database. So now if I run LSM again, okay. You see, we have got the database, then the instance, again another instance, the nodes, and finally the network. So this is what we have got. So I think I lo okay. So what? Okay. So now our uh, the Haiku utility is successful on both the nodes, which means I did not have to do this because the database is added. So what I could show you is I can show you the proof that database is added is what I can do is I can run db2 haiku manually and when I, I say I want to add option 3 add or remove HADR database now I will say I want to add a new database now it see you see no HADR databases were found that could be added to domain why we got this message because already the database which was present the HADR database that has already been added to that particular domain and that is the reason it says no HADR database were found that could be added to domain. So that is the message that we got. So I'll, let me exit out of db2 haiku. So let me do db2 haiku again and sh I'll show you that if I try to add another database and I say add option three, which is to add or remove HADR database. And if I say add a new database, then it is going to, it's going to say us no HADR database because the existing database actually our database has already been added. So now we will see the status. So on DB3, I got the instance as primary and on DB4, I got the instance as standby. But right now the, L the TSA is also set up. So what I'll do is I will kill the process for DB2CC on standby. 
सो किल माइनस नाइन सिक्स फोर थ्री सिक्स दैट्स दी प्रोसेस सो इमीडिएटली आई सी द प्रोसेस इज गॉन सी दैट प्रोसेस आई हैव किल्ड एंड नाउ दैट प्रोसेस इज नॉट देर सो इफ आई गिव अगेन दैट प्रोसेस इनिशियली इट वॉज विथ सिक्स फोर थ्री सिक्स डी बी टू सी सी केम बैक अगेन विथ वन वन सिक्स नाइन जीरो एंड इफ आई रन दिस कमांड बैक अगेन आई शुड बी एबल टू सी दैट द डेटा बेस इज एक्टिवेटेड एंड इट इज इन स्टैंड बाई मोड एंड इट इज ऑलरेडी कनेक्टेड सो लेट्स डू दिस अगेन सो आई एम किलिंग दी आई एम टर्मिनेटिंग दिस स्टैंड बाई इंस्टेंस सो दिस इज दिस स्टैंड बाई इंस्टेंस इज वन वन सिक्स नाइन सो आई एल किल वन वन सिक्स नाइन जीरो सो आई एम टर्मिनेटिंग दी डी बी टू सी सी प्रोसेस done that so no db2 cc process is there now if i see the hdr gate status host name okay stand by disconnected so it is disconnected and give it a minute and then you will find out that it got connected automatic it is in peer mode and it is now connected this is the way so what it is doing it's bringing up the db2 cc process and reintegrating our hdr database in hdr mode so it's reintegrating stand by with primary and that's why you could see it's a peer and connected we could do this on primary as well so now we will see that it is primary it is okay let me clear the screen so on primary i'm on primary primary peer and connected so let's actually see the process okay so the process is 584 5834 so i'm going to kill this process db2 cc process is gone it came back again see 5834 came as 10875 and if i run hdr get status then immediately it should become primary peer connected so what has happened here is the instance was brought down the tsa brought it up and the hdr got reintegrated automatically this is the beauty so for some reason the primary goes down the tsa is going to bring that instance up and is going to reintegrate it in hdr mode if standby goes down so if here if the if the standby goes down if the standby goes down then it's going to bring the standby instance up and it's going to reintegrate the hdr database if primary goes down is going to bring that primary instance and it's going to bring that database in hdr mode that's the beauty now we will see the final scenario where the primary server crashes it's it's we are going to shut down the primary server so if i shut down the primary server then the hdr is going to go to the standby is going to become the primary so let's see so this is right now this is primary this is standby so db4 db4 is standby while db3 is primary what i'm going to do is i'm going to let me put this so this is standby db3 db4 is standby and db3 is primary what i'm going to do is i'm going to shut down the primary or i'm going to shut down the db3 so switch to root and i'm going to say shut down now okay so i'm going to shut it down so now this is shut down so now if i here if i come and run lsm i'll exit out of this okay it's gone so let me open one more session for db4 Okay, the password was wrong. See here, we got some of the resources unknown, and then it's going to. So I'm on DB4, which is up and running, and it's pending online. So it's trying to bring it back online. And if I now run HDR cache status. then this is still in standby mode so right now the db4 is still in standby mode give it a minute and see what happens so the db3 is gone down that's what we could see it is failed offline so 
the db4 so anything with regard to db3 is offline so the the nodes are offline the network is offline the instance is offline anything regarding db3 is offline now let's give it a minute see on db4 from standby it has come to primary it was standby peer connected the db3 was shut down db3 was shut down so it disconnected and this standby became primary this is the last scenario that i wanted to explain and this is the most beautiful scenario if for some reason the primary and now if i show you the output of this command you would see that some of the resources are have came online so you see it has come online uh, i'm not sure why okay so i guess the db3 also came online so now if i try to what it has done so let's go to what it has done is it has shut down has actually so the command that i fired was shut down now but that it's the tsa has shut it down and restarted the node so let's prove that it has done that yes so now i am on db3 so the fourth point is if somebody shuts down the server so now if shut down the primary then tsa is going to try to sorry about that so shut down primary if somebody shuts down the primary then tsa is going to sh not shut it down but after shut it down is going to restart the server so it has done that so now it has done that so the db3 was original primary so let's see what has happened to our database has it gone standby mode yes it has gone standby mode and now here you see okay so let's see so it was standby then it became primary and it was disconnected disconnected let's see one more time what it has done and you can, could see the db3 came back up and primary peer connected this is the real beauty of your tsa so when you implement tsa you can have a peaceful sleep where if the primary node goes down then the standby is going to take over and if it if it is able to bring the primary server up is going to make a standby is going to make a standby and it's going to reintegrate the hadr pair if it for some reason if it is not able to bring this primary server the the old primary which which will be new standby if it is then it will be in disconnected state so the, it will be in this disconnected state so literally there was an outage obviously there was an outage because standby has to become primary but that outage was few minutes not the 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 outage that you would see normally for the dba to log in and the run the takeover so the scenarios that we saw was kill the standby instance and if the standby instance the it will bring it up and database will be brought in hdr mode kill the primary instance it will bring that primary instance up the database will be in hdr mode switch off the primary so i did the shutdown so when i shut down the standby became the primary and i love this standby becomes the primary and what it actually did because i did the shutdown now it rebooted the tsa rebooted the server and the old primary became the new standby and we did not issue the single takeover command who did it so the tsa so the setup was pretty simple only thing that i did was this particular two commands these two commands are more than enough for you to set up the tsa cluster on hadr database so i you would set up hadr as you normally would do you would set up hadr as you normally would do and you just run db2 haiku on standby first and primary later i did not do this so this was not required so only these two and i was able to set up my tsc now remember that this particular file is easy to configure and this particular file is a copy of a file from sql lib samples uh, tsa sorry i think ha xml and if i do ls minus l here then this is the file that i i have co taken copy and edited as per my ip address before ending this particular session i'll just show you how my file looks like so i'll just show you how my file looks like so here 
I have said I want to create a domain called db2ha with a network as a quorum. I'm adding the both the IPs into my private network for db3 and db4. I'm adding this cluster nodes. Then I'm adding the db partition num, the instance, and then finally I'm trying to add the database. You have to run this particular command on standby first and then on the primary. I hope this tutorial was useful. With this particular tutorial, I, I was able to show you how to set up the TSA between HADR databases. Thanks for watching. Do pass in your comments and bye bye till the next tutorial. Thank you.